Hi, I'm Hudson. I'm going to be teaching you on like a bunch of stuff like common line environment. So, like, um, Tuesday we saw like a bunch of stuff of, like how we can unfold the bus and like cell buildings. And the thing is, if you're going to be spending a lot of your time in, in the cell, it's worth kind of customizing and making things easier for you if you're not going to fold the the tricks that you can do and the tricks that people have already done, like how can you like, benefit from them? Uh, this is like a lot of kind of tricks and like, like stuff that we are competing. If you at any moment like don't like fully understand what is going on, like feel free to stop me, ask me why that happened, where did that came from, how, how did you manage to do this, and I'd be really happy to explain because that's what like, a lot of these lectures will be like all these all these things. Uh, I'm gonna start kind of all, like easy stuff, and we're gonna move all of like a different theme. Uh, but again, feel free to interrupt at any moment. So the first thing is like we saw that, like you can create all these commands, and like there's like a lot of flags that you can uh, do to them. And one of the really nice things is like most cells allow you to make aliases of commands. So let's say that I I do like ls minus l all the time. Uh, then it might be worth creating like an alias of like, and I will say I'll L2, I'm gonna create like LS minus L. And like now when I type L2, that expands to that and then I'll have kind of to type that really long thing. That's, this, this case seems so stupid, but like some default commands that you will be using a lot of time that are like dumbly long. Like for example, if you're in a, if you're in a, in a repo and you do like git status, it's a thing that you will be doing a lot of the time and it's stupidly long. So kind of having, so having some alias that is some like, yes, it's just like git status, you can do it, yes, and get the exact same result. Uh, and this is kind of like a bunch of kind of different properties. Uh, one of them is that like, for example, right now, if I type like, with L2 that we just define, it tells me oh, it's alias to ls minus l. Aliases can compound. So, for example, if I just now define L3, it's like, oh, it's L2 minus a. So, I not only want to list kind of everything in kind of the long format, which is what the L flag stands for, I also want to like list kind of the hidden files. Like, for example, here we should um, we do L3. We're gonna see that it's listing kind of these files that are hidden by default. And well, just happened here is like L3 was expanded to L2 minus A, and then L2 was again expanded to kind of LS. And the thing is, BAS is, is pretty good for BAS, like all the cells are pretty smart about it, and they also allow you to overwrite the existing name. So it doesn't, you know, like a lot of programming languages doesn't really allow you to do that, but it's completely fine for me to say, oh, ls is l3 and right now what is going to be happening is when i tap ls ls is alias to l3 l3 to l2 l2 to the program uh, ls and everything is being solved on some so for example if you just do this a lot of the time it, it might be worth knowing it's also sometimes you don't want to have the alias work for you sometimes you may want the raw function because you maybe have alias your Mac LS to or like your Mac grep to kind of Unix grep, which is a thing because, for example, Mac and Unix uh, utils sometimes have a slightly different flag, and that's kind of annoying. So, if you want to look at kind of call it without like the aliases being resolved, without using um, the aliases, you just call like barbar last LS and it works with the, with the regular one. Same thing if you just do like common less. Uh, it works right away. If you want to kind of permanently remove, you can literally just like an alias ls. And now if I ask which is ls, it's literally pin ls. Uh, so far so good? Uh, yes, so good um, next thing, um, uh, Another kind of, this is kind of not exactly uh, in the sense of this class, but like a uh, quick trick to notice, like there is like a most Unix based system, you have this like forward class EMP, kind of a temporary file system. So if you want to just like tinker with like creating files, moving stuff, trying stuff around, 
or you have one to like some temporary place to place your kind of temporary files for your script. TMP will be kind of clean every time you reboot and it's perfectly fine to use. You don't have to kind of then remember to, to clean it. So for example, let's make a beer here, move into it. And when I'm, oh, one, one way before, before I get into this, one thing with Alice is, is if, if I get like a, a new cell now and I ask for L2, L2 is not recommended because I define this in this cell. And the, if I want this to carry on different things, what technically I have to do is this, this command that I type where I say this is this, it's like a command that needs to be executed every time I enter a cell. But thing is pretty much every cell has some config files and will leave some preferences in, in the nodes uh, that we read. So for example, if you are using bus, you will have in your oh, in your home folder, you will have your kind of uh, busrc where you can pull like different stuff that will be read in the here. So for example, what I have in my busrc is like, oh, check, this is kind of syntax for check, this file exists, and if it exists, kind of execute all the commands that are in that file. And if we go to, if we read analysis, this is like a bunch of like really common analysis. And this is executed every time I open a cell, all these analysis are executed and I can use them easy. And I, one, one nice thing of kind of factoring this out is that even if, either if I'm using bus or I'm using C states, I can also have also my kind of, uh, I think it's in my CHRC, it's kind of same. I, here I also search in the same analysis, so I have to kind of copy them around, kind of reference them both from the same place. Um, what else, what else? Yeah, uh, next thing we can do, we can go to that kind of temporary folder we have created, and we can see the like, kind of in the last class we covered like a bunch of stuff that we kind of passed it and like uh, we also mentioned there's like these other cells that kind of are slightly more convenient because they have like a bunch of useful features by default without you having kind of to define uh, a bunch of stuff. The one I'm going to be covering right now only like a couple of things kind of to get you kind of looking for where can you get all the stuff is C sage which is nice because it's kind of a super set of bugs so everything can that kind of uh, works in bus already works right away with C6. Some some cells don't work that way, and uh, but it has some really convenient features. For example, the let's make uh, I'm creating here like a, a couple of folders. Let's cd into them, and now let's create. For example. Here, when I'm, where I'm creating, I'm creating four files. So I have these four files that I just created. And, and if I list the structure right now, I have a folder called B, I have a folder called C, and all these TXT files. We, we saw that globbing could be really useful if I wanted to kind of get all these TXT files. If I already knew kind of that they are there, I can just do something like this. And like it will expand that to all things. But let's say I don't really know they're there. It would be really mean to kind of have like a wildcard for like an entire path. And that's what like uh, C6 gives you with like the the double asterisk. With double asterisk, this thing expands to the same thing. And another really convenient feature of C6 is that like you can let's say it's in blue because it's kind of telling me that I can expand this right away in the cell if I'm kind of, kind of having to wait for. For, for, for the cell to do that. Um, that's also convenient because some, some here doesn't really matter too much. Uh, in some other cases it's better because for example, if you're using kind of the bang band wildcard, that expanded too quickly, uh, that's replacing the entire first command here. And sometimes it's good to kind of see the entire thing because but by default when you're kind of substituting, it substitutes and runs the command at the same time. Um, what else we can do? Um, we have also C uh, C by default kind of looks like, for example, if I just do like something like this, it figures out kind of the intermediary folders 
yes, uh, by trying all of them. And another convenient thing is uh, allow you tab completion, but allows you kind of to select the the things that, that you're using. And oh, and like if you enable it, it also kind of if you uh, crop it out and like type a command that doesn't really exist, a lot of the time will tell you kind of oh you you mistype this part of the command. Do you want to kind of to, for me to correct LLS with LS? Which is also extremely convenient, especially if you have like a really long command and you feel yourself the correct like uh, mistake that you do. Um, moreover, not only there's like a lot of these are like slightly uh, small convenient things that like these different cells can do for you, but a lot of people have already invested a huge amount of time on making like significant frameworks that give you like quality of life uh, improvement. Uh, a lot of them have already been seen because they're kind of working by default. But for example, if if I move into this folder, oh, one thing that I forgot about CZ, CZ along with the left prompt gives you like a right prompt where you can also like put the status and you know, like a thing that you can also customize. So for example, here I'm using Presto, which is kind of uh, one of the CZ frameworks. There are many more like uh, Antigen, which is kind of a C6 uh, package installer. There's also all my C6, which is uh, pretty famous. And the common components which are which are stuff that you can customize. And as uh, like John as well yesterday, you can get like a stuff. For example, here it knows that I'm for yourself. This is like a, a repository and tells me the branch that I'm in. And the data series tells me that there is like some modified file. And on this square tells me there's like some untracked file. So it it's pretty convenient to um, get that. Uh, other quality of life things that it gives you, for example, the thing that you were like I was saying before, since it gives you the spell correction, a lot of these things give you syntax highlight. So they are kind of on the go figuring out if like what I'm typing is kind of a valid command, and if not, they're kind of like highlighting in red, like oh, this command doesn't exist. You, you maybe uh, you may want to fix that, but like it says. Uh, Yes, tells me. Uh, here, for example, it's telling me kind of I just control C, which was what I was typing, so it's telling me kind of the error command. For example, if I try to grab a garbage into any file, it gives me the error code of one, because grab gives you an error code of one when it doesn't find anything, and which is what we saw the uh, dollar sign uh, <coughs> integration mark for you. And, and it's kind of giving you, for example, if, if you didn't even provide a, an argument, it gives you kind of the error, like, error code too. So you can like, you can customize how like a lot of what you will be seeing and it's fairly convenient because it removes some steps um, in the long run that's fairly really useful. Uh, some more other stuff, oh yeah, for example, let's say I don't really know the flag for Take your app, which is like something we have for it, and really know they were not the, I don't remember fully well, like one of the flags for grip is. This thing can kind of give you the access to, like, it prints you, passes the man page, and give you like a short description of all the flags without going to go to the, to the man page. But depending on the command, it can be more or less scary because it's like a lot of detail that you need to go through. Um, what else, what else? Uh, oh yeah, another thing, this is slightly more tricky to install sometimes, I have had like issues. In the past, so, for example, here, you can see that like when I'm typing stuff, it's kind of auto-completing in like being gray. And that's kind of, because it's already doing some sort of control R in the background, and like matching with my previous history. And then kind of, kind of like right away do math of that with the, with the previous values and easily able to complete on that. Uh, oh, and a lot of them, if you don't really like my theme, which you don't say that, like, why do you have the security bars? There's like a lot of them come with like default. Sometimes in same prompts, so you want to mean maybe, for example, that's what I keep a simpler one. And this is one, there are many. Just look around, like be aware of like, oh, a lot of these 
good stuff exists. Uh, nice. Uh, next thing is like right now when you're using your cell, like the cell is only kind of half of the equation. The other half is kind of the terminal emulator, which is like a program that is running the cell that you're really using. So by default, pretty much all like Unix distribution come with like some uh, emulator, but you might want to kind of use a different one because they offer different support. Like some of them have their font rendering or some of them have like their key binding, so like the, the way, and even if you just like choose the one that comes with default with your distribution, which sometimes can be pretty terrible, for example, like, like you can spend time, but for example, the the one for Mac, I, I've never kind of liked it a lot. Um, uh, there are like many parameters that you can customize, you can customize the font that you're using, you can customize the color scheme that you're using, which for example, by default, here, man, you don't have a color scheme, it's kind of black and white. Right? And again, compounded over time, the stuff is it's very useful to know. Uh, even performance, some like newer terminals are like offloading some of the subpixel rendering to kind of the GPU, and they like render super fast. I mean, I you know there's well, you know, multi platforms like Alacrity, and um, has Ki, PTI, like really convenient ones. Uh, and the other thing that you may want to be aware of is Tmux, which is kind of a terminal multiplexer, which is you can run multiple cells within kind of the same terminal window. I don't need to be opening kind of multiple terminal windows to just uh, run multiple um, uh, tabs. I can just have like several tabs within the same terminal window. I can, it's going to be really clunky because this is too big, but I can have kind of split and be running kind of eight stuff in here, and you just play this bit because the, the font is too big. And one of the really nice things of a terminal multiplexer like Tmux is that you can detach it and it still runs in, in the background. So I, I can go on with my life, and then I can just like jump back into kind of this layout of, of pains and that have happened, and I can modify pretty much. Um, a lot of the stuff that is happening in here. Uh, for example, I don't know if I have levels that are open. But yeah, the, there's like, you can, and again, for example, if you open your, if you install Tmux and you open it, you have like this really classic green bar at the bottom with all like no information, but you can go into the, into, the Tmux configuration file, which is just again, oh, oh yeah. Uh, so you, you can just configure like a bunch of these tabs to your lightning to display kind of. The CPU temperature, the the time of the day, uh, how the scroll happens, what happens. So when you copy, that's what one thing to, to really investigate with a lot of these tools is having access to the to the clipboard bag, which was also like a, an old piazza. Uh, again, like making your life easy, so you don't have to be kind of typing commands into Bing and from Bing, for example, can do all this stuff for you. The other reason the terminal multiplexers are really handy is if you're running a server, for example, in the background, you can open up two tabs in Tmux and have the server running in one and the client in the other. And then whenever you switch back and forth between the two, the other one keeps running. And you can still get to the output if you switch to the other one. And you can even like run a server and then detach it. Like what I will do with, the, I have a server in the Netherlands, I will like SSH to that machine, open up Tmux, Tmux on that machine, start some server there that's like um, scanning the internet for something or whatever, detach and entirely disconnect from that SSH session. And then later on, like a few days later, I can SSH back to the server and then reattach Tmux and then everything appears, including any output that's been in between, just as if I'd been connected all along. So yeah, like that, that's exactly, like for example, here, this is one of my last servers that have like jobs running, I have like some Tmax session that is open and I can always kind of reattach to it without having to 
recreate, and it's kind of easier. You, you can always, you kind of saw like the first day, you can like disown your pro to process like, into the background. So you're kind of having the journey and jumping back into it is way more convenient. Uh, any questions so far? Good. What's the plugin that you use to do uh, like the control arm wire thing? The what, sorry? What, what's like the plugin you're using to do the uh, control arm feature wire? Oh yeah, yeah. That, that stuff, uh, it comes by default in the fish shell. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> the, the thing you want to be looking for is history of inserts, which, as John said, was kind of, I think, was originally uh, created in the fish cell, and pretty much all of the other cells copied it because it's pretty you know. <laughs> So, like, if you're using C to do some module, and I think has also has one. Will you post all your forensic files on the application? Uh, yeah, I we, think all of ours are already on GitHub. Yeah, if you, if you just look my GitHub with it, then it's. But yeah, we will post them somewhere. Yeah. Um, next, uh, then another thing to be aware of is that like a lot of the it was more kind of on the general cell way, but then a lot of the time what you will be doing is running a small like uh, small commands that will really simple stuff that can be like quite tiring. Like for example, let's say I want to go to my uh, few competition pieces from last semester. Uh, I need to kind of even with like. Nice type of competition gets really annoying pretty fast to kind of like move into some random folder. Uh, however, if I have a read in there, there's like one field that is usually referred to kind of as auto jump. This is a huge time saver. What it does, it does fuzzy uh, string matching. Fuzzy string matching just tries to match that like not like rep or not like regular expression, which usually just tries find like the very max with different words. And like here, if I do like something like PC, PC5, it will take me to the exact same place. And what this common is doing is just keeping, um, just keeping like a history of like all the places that have been frequently and recently, and this is scoring them. So for example, I've been working a lot in the kind of the repo for the class, so this has like a really, a high value, so if, even if I do something like um, that, it directly takes me to that place. And you can not only, like this, this auto jump, there are like certain implementations, the one that I'm using which is called FASD, also allows you to have like commands that instead of doing the CD, just kind of give you the file. So for example, um, I can, So, for example, if I do something like this, and I've been working on a file that is called common line, which is kind of the, the one for, for this class, it already kind of expanded this theme because I have been using it recently and kind of drops me with Vim into it. And uh, moreover, you can like kind of combine this. Oh, well, I will get to that slightly later when I cover the next thing. Uh, Similarly, if, if you're using a, let's see, if, you, if you're using, I think, I don't know if BAD for this. Yeah, for example, here, like uh, BAD is kind of like a replacement. Oh, I forgot. I forgot Ranger, yeah. And the other thing is, if for navigating folders, uh, the other thing that is worth knowing about is like a uh, Ranger or something along those lines. Like sometimes if you want to be exploring like some uh, file system quickly but you don't want to be doing it with the file explorer, you can still have like mm, a command line explorer that will do for you. There are like many like MCC and a lot of them also kind of allow you to customize them to even kind of display images or like open with your default editor or stuff like that. Uh, the other thing that I was showing uh, if you're cutting files all the time, uh, you're probably cutting like uh, uh, files that are like code files or data files, and it's nice having. Um, I don't know, do we have here gen file? Like it's nice having kind of syntax uh, highlighting them or like uh, uh, what's this called? line numbers uh, in them. Uh, so you alias cat to bat, right? Yeah. 
But for example, as I said earlier, if I do if I do cat, uh, some of these files, I, I get back. Okay? So it's pretty useful. A lot of these tools that are doing, sometimes they try to follow kind of the tools they are replacing the closest, like all the plugs similarly. So sometimes it's uh, tempting to kind of replace them, but it's good to kind of how to undo the alias on the go if you need to. Um, um, similarly, there is like one called EXA, which is kind of a replacement for LS, that has slightly saner defaults. Like for example, when you do LS minus L, it gives you like a raw amount of like uh, bytes. Like if you are thinking on like large files, it's just your brain stops understanding how many numbers are there. Uh, this one, for example, tells you kind of decide like in kilobytes or in megabytes, there's no megabyte file here, but you know, it's slightly more convenient to color coding for the permissions. Uh, also knows about like git, so you can use skip file um, like that. Um, yeah. Uh, next thing, if, if you ever try like find, do you find infrastructure? No, no. So find is like a um, tool that like uh, like it's really convenient. You just it, it will go through your kind of file hierarchy and like use a different flag. So you, you can say oh I want uh, things that have some name. But thing is find can get uh, if you kind of go through the map page find sometimes. It was, it's really verbose and, and doesn't understand, for example, that most of the time you don't want to um, you don't want to be finding like files in your Git repository, like files are in the in the hidden folder of your Git repository. If you, you know what there is. So a V kind of by default uh, already knows that the most likely thing you want to do is A, like search for the pattern, which find does not, and then understand a lot of like these hidden files that you don't, you don't want to be looking around. So for example, if I do FD hacker, it goes through all my directory and like quickly finds like, like hacker tools, which is like the repository for the class. And to make the, the, the case for that, if I do like uh, FD and I come the number of lines that it's printing, like if I run it, it's just printing all the files that it finds because I didn't specify any pattern. If I count the number of lines that it's outputting, like 59,000, which is a lot, and you saw like how fast it was able to go through them. But if I do the same thing with find, due to all these hidden files that you will get if you work with a lot of repositories, they're like three times that many files. Uh, and also with find, if you want to try to do a search for a given file name, it's like find dot dash i name yeah, yeah, percent yeah. the search term percent, and you have to remember to quote it. Yeah. It's awful. Something like this, I remember, I think. Yeah, and then star, I, I, I star, star pattern, star, and double code. Right. Um, Except find not FD. Oh. <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, Control A jumps to the start of the current line, and Control E jumps to the end. It's no. a very convenient way of moving back and forth without having to go to the home and end keys. Um, similarly, if you want to, instead of finding what you want to do, is grabbing like fifty-nine thousand files. Uh, there are better tools than just doing something like you can always do something that like like find and then like grab or like a find. Grab that shot. Uh, oh, you, right, you can do grab the side, yeah, I forgot about that. You can do like grab uh, the side, uh, but there are like slightly more convenient tools that are like again have figured out a cleaner syntax, senior defaults, and also ignore all, the, like, all these files in your integration mode. So, one thing that I do a lot of the time is uh, let's say I, I, I know that like. In some point, I, I kind of wrote some Python script where I use like the subprocess dot call uh, function. So I can easily use this tool, which is regret, telling it I want only files that like end in, in the with a by extension and I have the subprocess dot call. So 
and it kind of goes through these 59,000 files and gives me like all these folders that I have, these, sorry, all these files that I have and the line where it found this pattern. So especially when you're like, like in Python or like LaTeX, I find myself all the time using this to like, oh yeah, I know this is somewhere, search for a pattern and then like you're always telling me it instead of going to Google and relearn all the stuff that I will relearn at some point. Uh, also, if instead of doing kind of, if you find yourself doing something like, oh, let's do a PSL and let's, let's first see a process in there, and let's say you start like doing some your sleep and like if you, but then like this, this is a terrible example now that I think of it. But like, but if you find yourself cutting many reps or like redoing reps a lot of the time, one really nifty tool is um, FCF, which again, like, it stands for like passive finder. And what FCF does, it's kind of does like a grep on the go. So it's kind of matching like lazily, but it's kind of figuring out on the go the, the stuff uh, that you want. And you can kind of couple this with like uh, other tools. So you can do something like FV into FCF. So now I, I, I can like do for style to like match this like hacker for like the hacker tools repository. And you can even link it to kind of the, the, the same thing that I mentioned earlier that like all these cells allow you to customize them. One thing that I've done is the control R instead of the default is calling this script and doing uh, like fuzzy finding on my on my history. So if I want to like search for like like recent reps, it's telling me or, like all these places, and it will drop in there while where I use it. Um, another convenient one is that like when you mm, when you arrange something, it's for real. Like it's unless unless you missed and it didn't work. Rent deletes the file forever. However, that's not really what like your file explorer does when you delete something. It usually moves it into like this like trash that like it's clear every so often, but it's slightly more forgiving because if you kind of uh, forget like oh like let me try it back. It's not like a good backup strategy, but like it's good to kind of have like that peace of mind that you don't completely delete the file. Uh, and again, a lot of people have like implemented a thing that does exactly that. Like, for the different OSs kind of have like different commands because different OSs handle the trust differently. But if I trust now the this C folder, oh. if I trust now this uh, D folder, uh, now I can see that instead of being completely removed is now sitting into the trust and which is exactly the OS folder that is here as well to just want to see. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, versus, uh, oh no, another another convenient one to know is like man pages are extremely helpful. Like you, you can again like you can do like man fine and there is a lot of detail that you can go through and like if you are looking for something technical that's wonderful but a lot of the time at least like I, I experience that it's way easier to kind of see some examples and kind of figure out like the basic or like 99% usage of that command and there are like some tools where like people kind of have done that. one like oh there's a lot of good here oh it's just because the size of by what this is doing is just kind of giving you kind of the basic usages and like people have just written this kind of small examples of really common commands and instead of kind of figuring out or like googling I have like oh if I want to do some case insensitive right away and many many times I solve my doubt just using something like this um, fun fact almost all the tools you've mentioned so far are written in Rust Oh yeah, 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 like FD, EXA, RIPGREP, TLDR, uh, FCF, and, and that's that's also because for and that, <laughs> that, that too. Well, that's one thing, and that's also for a reason. Like, 
one thing you want to be doing when you're using all these things is you don't want to kind of uh, become another yourself because it's going slow. And a lot of these tools are written in Rust because Rust is incredibly fast compared to kind of doing stuff like in Bass or like in Python. Like well, someone will come out with some really pretty script, but it will be done in Python and it will be extremely slow. So one thing you want to be careful about is not installing a bunch of stuff that you don't really need that slows yourself. Because again, like if you're using just all the time and it's kind of slow, that's not the thing you want. Uh, what do we have? Oh, another another extremely convenient one, which solves one of these famous. Um, Oh, I trust it. Another convenient one, which I don't know if that's green really rust, but like uh, it's really difficult to kind of have to kind of figure out what the what the What the unpack common, or like you're gonna have to unpack a lot of stuff. There is this, uh, so for example, here I have just created this compressor of Targis, UGCF. And thing is, there's like a lot of flags, and if you want to uncompress it, you kind of have to figure out that at least I, like you, you, you can understand it, and I understood it at some point, but then it just becomes really convenient because you can ignore if it's a tar, a sig, a rar, you do something like unpack and like this thing, someone has a really kind of baked in all the pattern matching and it works for you. Like, also, never ever like uh, unpack the stuff in your working directory right now. You always create some new ones, you don't have to kind of do that like, oh, this thing just explored in my repo and I have to kind of figure out how to do it all, all these files. Um, what, any questions so far? Anything that I did and I was confusing? Um, oh yeah, also when you're copying a lot of files, uh, either over the net, you can use, sorry, in, the, in your like, local file, you can use CP, or like over the, the net, you can use SCP. Thing is, both are kind of stupid, and like, if the files are already there, they copy them again. And that's, like a lot of time you're like, syncing a lot of files, or like these really large files, it's really stupid. It should be looking into rsync, which I think is saves by default with most Unix systems. And this thing will figure out if the files are already there. You can also like give them like flags, like partial. But like if you're transferring huge files and the, the connection breaks you know, halfway, we'll figure out. Oh, I like this. I have all these chunks already. I can continue from here. Um, I think that covers pretty much all the stuff I wanted to say. I think we are on the 50 minute mark. Uh, again, happy to take any questions. In that case, we'll take a 10 minute break and then we'll do data wrangling. It's gonna be insane, man. It's gonna be crazy. I'm excited. <laughs>